Hey yo! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Miss Linnea Lark and today we're going to start a new series for my Pottery 2 class on using slip. We'll see some of the fabulous ways that you can use slip in your pottery and I'll teach you how to make and alter your slip for different results. Let's get started. First you got to collect some old bone dry clay. Find some trimmed shavings, some old slabs, whatever you've got. If you don't have enough, just roll out some slabs and put them in the sun. Then get a hammer and smash. I find quarter sized pieces work the best. You don't want your clay so small that it turns into dust that you're breathing, but you want it to be small enough that it can dissolve quickly. If you've got large balls of clay, the blender doesn't really want to beat through it easily. Now it's time to submerge all your clay pieces. I usually let the clay sit in the water for about a half hour or so. Once I can tell that the clay is dissolved by stirring it a bit, if everything falls apart very easily, I get out my trusty blender and give it a mix. I noticed right away that there was too much water in the mix and so I poured some of the excess water out. And now we've got some thick slip. For our purposes in this slip unit, we want our slip to be on the thick side. And when mixing slip, it's best to start thick and add small amounts of water to thin it out. If we started out with way too much water and the slip was way too watery and thin, we'd have to dissolve more clay before we could thicken it up. Who's got time for that? So just start out thick. I know it's good and thick when the ripples don't settle and hold their form. Let's get a quick peek at our future projects and how to best prepare the slip for each. Our first two projects will be all about adding slip to the walls of our vessels. The first is to make a slip design and the second is to create random organic drips. For both of these slip techniques we want our slip pretty thick so it doesn't drip too much on the sides of the vessels. It's also good to have thick slip because then it won't shrink as much resulting in cracks. For both of these slip techniques we will want our slip on the thick side. Thicker slip doesn't drip as much and it also doesn't need to shrink as much. Sometimes if your slip is too watery and it shrinks a lot then it will detach or crack off of your walls. But for this project we also want the slip to be super smooth without grit. So we need to use a sieve to strain it. First I try out my Talisman 80 mesh sieve. But as you can see the slip doesn't want to go through at all. Normally I would just add water until I could work the slip through with a spatula or paintbrush. But that means I might have to wait a few days to allow the excess water to evaporate before it thickens back up. So I opt to use my 80 mesh nut milk bag which are usually used to strain homemade almond milk. It's a slippery messy business but this straining device allows me to squish the thicker slip through the sturdy mesh eliminating all the tiny grit. Butter smooth. If you're in my Pottery 2 class, you'll be decorating six vessels with butter smooth slip. So make sure you fill one to two large tubs with sieve slip. It's important to store your slip in a way that keeps it nice and wet. You'll need the slip to last over the next few weeks as you try out each of these techniques. So it's a good idea to put a layer of saran wrap under the lid. I would even advise you to spray your slip each time you use it before storing it away. Our next technique is slip trailing. We'll be using slip trailing bottles and applicators that have very fine nozzles that clog super easy. So you want to make sure that your slip is blended super fine and that the slip isn't too thick to squeeze through the finest tip. But you also want to make sure that the slip's thick enough that when you apply it to your walls the slip doesn't drip down the sides. So we want the slip thick but smooth. I take some of my already strained slip and add a wee bit of water. I then use the immersion blender with its fine blades to thoroughly blend out any clay clumps and evenly mix in the water. The slip should still be thick enough that the ripples keep their form when you're blending. Move the blender up and down and all around and make sure you blend a little longer than seems necessary just to be safe. Once you've made and saved and stored all the slip that you're going to need, let's talk about what you'll do with all that extra unstrained slip. We want to use as much as we can without waste. So we can always use the extra slip for score slip scoring purposes, which is the process of using slip as a clay glue that allows you to join two harder pieces of clay together. When I'm making slip for slipping and scoring purposes, the slip doesn't have to be fancy, but I usually mix it on the runny side, just because the slip tends to dry out and thicken up over time. 
and I try to only have to make two batches of slip per semester. So I gather any empty or light slip bottles that could be filled up and use the funnel to fill the slip bottles. This batch is way thicker than I normally use for the slip bottles. It doesn't even want to move through the funnel, so I add some water and remix until I'm able to easily get the slip through the funnel. When using the funnel, you want to gently knock it up and down on the bottle so the slip filters out into the bottle. And then I gotta clean it all up. Unfortunately, any unused slip is going to get thrown away. We have very limited storage space, so scoop it into a trash can and wash all the tubs, buckets, and blenders and sponges out. And put it all back where it belongs. If you're unsure where things belong, just come talk to me. I will help you find their homes. For these projects, it's definitely better to have extra slip made up ahead of time. It's way better than running out while you're in the middle of a project and having to do all this over again. I also recommend that you buddy up and make a large batch of slip together and help each other out. I would make sure each of you has one and a half to two large yogurt tubs full of slip with lids. If you make too much and it dries out, you can always just add some water and re-blend with the immersion blender. I hope this video helps you make nice slip. Until next time, happy day.